we call it Petrol or Blue Green. In Sweden, it's Teal. called Turquoise. Yeah, turquoise. Yeah. We call it turquoise. Yeah. Uh, turquoise why is. don't you say this? It's, uh, it's teal. I or... already feel uh, half Swedish now. Turquoise. Now you have to be quiet because the camera is rolling. Welcome back, episode number five. Um, Tim is just uh, reading up about what teal and orange mean. Now we're actually going to talk about colors and the polygenic nature of the animal and how important it is to understand how different traits work together to create the phenotype. The phenotype is the visual of the animal. The genotype is what the animal is carrying. If you want the full video of all of the genetics to understand what uh, heterozygous, homozygous, incomplete dominant, dominant and different kind of morph in super form, what's advisable not to breed and so on, drop it down in the comment and we will make it happen. So for example, one of uh, the clear example that's quite easy to use is our lipsticks. They are from the beginning from Tom Burke's stock and Tim has done an awesome job breeding and increasing the quality of the lipsticks produced at Imperator Morphs over time. My arms are not long enough. Thank you so much for this comment. <laughs> <laughs> like the lipsticks, uh, they are a albinos and important when you breed them, uh, you have to be really conscious when you are going to label and be honest, is this a lipstick? Uh, this is just one example of all the different kind of morphs where you see so many mislabeled animals and here we have a little bit from what Tim talked about mainly in the last video like uh, the reputation and the trust can you trust what the breeder put in the papers that they are correct because it's a pain if you buy something and pay money for a lipstick for example and when you breed it you don't get lipsticks because it's a polygenic trait it's a, it's a constellation of several different genes working together that's why we actually can have like the lipstick influence without the call albino being visual we also see this a lot nowadays on a lot of the vpi positive stuff because you have all the different pastel limes pink panther red panther red rum and so on and a lot of them are truly amazing but excuse the expression but there are so much shit out there being mislabeled so no matter what polygenic trait pastel or what you like to call it if we're talking uh, red rum pink panther red panther on the vpi t positive strain or we're talking lipstick where you have the corals and all of that you have to understand that just breeding lipstick to uh, non-lipstick you have to be really honest when you're going to label the babies if they are lipstick or not because all you're doing with this is watering out the polygenic nature of that animal. So what we try to explain here is that uh, just because like uh, VPI Pink Panther was involved in the breeding or Lipstick Albino doesn't mean that all the babies that come out are also carrying the genes and will look the same um, phenotype wise later on um, as adults as the parents did. It is important to pay attention if selective breeding um, is something that the, the person is doing that you you want to purchase the animals from and uh, definitely makes sense to question okay is just one uh, animal of the parents carrying the genes uh, or do both animals are like uh, top-notch phenotype uh, lipstick albinos for example makes sense yes because all of these different traits are coming from selective breeding from the start true all good <laughs> see you in the next episode like subscribe you know what to do over and out <laughs> bye